All right, YouTube, today we're going to be going over the round 11 that we had in Game 5 versus the New York Subliners yesterday. Uh, this was an absolute battle of a series. We ended up getting the reverse sweep after winning this round, but I kind of want to detail everything that was kind of going on this round because it's a really interesting one, uh, specifically for something that just came down to the wire. So specifically for this round 11, obviously I usually don't do S&D VOD, but I figured it's just one round, and this is basically just a story of how the map was going as a whole. So it's not like I'm giving anything away. It's basically... Uh, a round that came through all of these adjustments that were going on in this specific map. So for round 11, we get defensive side and we know this this entire game, they've just been basically bullying out this B side. So what they've been doing is just getting control of the B site, smoking this, making sure that they get over to the bridge. And then later on, they would just, you know, maintain, you know, coop and top three control and then eventually get over to the plant, plant the bomb and then just play post plant from it. So we were having a lot of difficulties earlier on uh, trying to actually get them off of this bomb or not even plant in the first place so the adjustment here was and was just like you know i'm just gonna hit through mid uh, and try and pinch right away just an instant like go through mid bank on them either like fast going a or fast going b most likely b because that's what they were doing throughout the entire map uh so he just uh, is going to instantly pinch uh you know top third from here and then ag he's gonna go over to the bottom scaff area play this credit corner uh, i believe brandon goes to top fountain so he you know takes this route over here so he can watch over towards coop and then uh ken is gonna be the one going over towards top plaid and basically watching over ant as he does that it's common play you know a lot of teams have done this specific type of play before but this is what we were going to try and do for this round 11 um hoping that you know if they were good to go b that they wouldn't pick up the pinch right away and that's what ended up happening here for uh ant so as you'll see here in this round it's really important to adjust to what teams are doing in the middle of the map so you know you see a lot of teams do these type of adjustments here and we just knew that it was probably going to be some type of B push because they were literally doing it every single round. So coming out of P4 here, AG hits his nade so he knows that it's going to be multiple people towards this B side once again. So he realized that info. He's just going to play this credit corner over here. As soon as you know get he gets that info, he's already relaying that to Ant over here and he's going to try and pinch this top third super quick. So you see Skies, you know, try and peek for the deeper pinch over here, but you know, Ant just sneaks right underneath uh, with the good timing and he gets towards these stairs over here. And what's actually crazy in this situation situation for Ann and this goes to show you know how good of a player he actually is is you know he has realized on all of these B pushes how they were watching pinch and so he actually doesn't even hear Paco in this situation he just knows that they were watching the pinch from Coop's side, so he knew that there was a possibility that this guy was just going to run at him, you know, trying to chase him while Skies was just, you know, looking for it top third. So what he does is instead of, you know, going top third and, you know, trying to find Skies top three, wherever corner that he might be playing in, you know, he instead just goes and tries to chow Paco down here because he knows that someone's probably going to be running at him, knowing that they have him trapped in these stairs. So, you know, that's exactly what happens here. Paco sees that he doesn't exit. He goes back down the stairs to chow Paco because he knows that New York was watching the pinch and knows that he would have been seen. Uh, so he's playing this kill first. And, and, you know, it's actually just an insane play. He does, in fact, get the kill. And on the other side, AG, you know, who he was playing this corner. So you're going to get a one and done over here. So this is, you know, we call it a one and done spot because you're most likely getting one, but you're probably just going to get traded out right here. Unfortunately for AG, this is uh, exact timing where Brandon isn't technically watching right over him. He's actually watching, you know, his top third or AC for him. So instead Instead of you know actually trading him right away you know ag gets a kill and then just gets instantly traded uh, as soon as this guy slides in right there and you know brandon isn't quick enough to actually get this trade so Ant wins a big one on Hydra here. So him getting that one is massive because obviously it would have just been a, a 3v2 in their favor, but instead it's just traded out. So it becomes a 2v2. And this is where uh, a really good read from Brandon comes in. So you know, we know that they're B side, we know they're Coop side, you know, Ken is still middle, so he kind of technically can see if they wrap this way, uh, but they do end up, you know, smoking the bomb here, and I believe it's Kismet who has the bomb and he has the smoke in hand. You know, right after getting this trade on Ant, Skies is able to see Kenny uh, towards short over here, so he gets some shots off and kind of backs Ken down towards fountain area, and, you know, they actually smoke the bomb here and you know just completely fake it out what their idea is here is they're going to smoke the bomb and just literally fake it out make us think that they're going towards b side but instead you know number seven's already pushed up mid and number five is going to wrap over towards them so they're going to group up together to try and go a the smoke is just complete bait but the important thing here for us was that we had tax still so i believe ken and brandon both still had their stun so you know top founder over here brandon stuns this and once he doesn't you know hit anyone with 
his stun, and once Ken doesn't hit anything with his stun, you know, Brandon is already off the races because he's reading that it's probably going to be a rotate towards A. It's just a really, really good read because, you know, they smoke the bomb. You think, you know, if they're going to cross over the bridge or you're at least going to plant the bomb, you're going to hit them with the stun. But since they don't hit anything, Brandon just instantly books it towards uh, the red side because he knows that it's probably a fake. You know, we're going to leave Ken here just in case it wasn't a fake and they're just delaying that push towards B side. But Brandon is reading this. He goes towards the low lights. He actually starts to hear them here. So I believe, you know, round 11, they're not using covert. So he just completely hears both of them. He now flanks over towards the ladder and then he just gets a free two piece, you know, top red here. So it was an absolutely amazing read by Brandon. He gets this one kill. Prones gets the second kill. Ken doesn't even need to help him with this. Uh, but it was so important to actually, you know, first read this situation because, you know, this is a mixy situation where it's a 2v2 and you know that they're towards this coop side and they even, you know, fake it with the smoke. But it's really good that they had their tacks with them still. You know, Brandon just throws his tack right at the bomb. As soon as he throws his tack, he's already on the move. It's not even before, you know, Ken throws his tack as well. But once we both don't hit him with tacks, uh, you know, it, we kind of guarantee that it's probably some sort of fake thing that they're doing something uh, together towards the A side. And, you know, Brandon just is instantly on this. And since he made the read so quick, he instantly has his timing to actually go towards lights here and hear them. You know, if he was a little bit later on this, he might not have heard him. So uh, just a really, really good read out of Brandon. And he kind of just wins this this round. You know, obviously, I think the biggest kill out of this whole thing is the ant kill on Hydra. So if we actually rewind to the situation, you know, and actually, you know, hitting this super quick and getting the timing so that Skies doesn't see him, you know, just right underneath him. But him winning this one on one on Hydra is actually just the biggest gunfight in the entire round. I don't know how he wins it. I think, you know, Paco even had first shots on him. But, you know, having that 2v2 instead of a 3v2 is such a big, you know, shift in this entire situation. So, you know, that gunfight was definitely the biggest. And then obviously, you know, this read right away by Brandon basically secures the round. And, you know, it was a huge round for us. Obviously, uh, we lost, you know, the first two maps of the series. We come back back, go into a Karachi search, and we go all the way to round 11 and, you know, clutch it up there. And we end up taking the first seed for this next major. So we're going into Miami 7-0, didn't lose a match this day. So proud of the boys for doing that. And obviously proud of the boys for, for icing up here because they have been in a lot of grueler situations this entire stage and have constantly been able to, you know, pull out these wins. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this mini breakdown of the round 11 versus New York, and I'll see you guys in the next one.